it was nice it was it's nice it's uh useful because um as we say you need to uh give some some proof to people especially here in italy because you know in italy it's not so um known actually uh solution focus is it's it's, it's become it's becoming known uh, last year we had the um, first ABTA conference and um, we have some books, um, most of them out of print, but uh, my best hopes are that <laughs> um, also with this kind of interviews uh, it becomes more and more known. And about that, uh, what solution focused brief therapy research says in general, let's say to our colleagues, let's say in general, and especially today, uh, 2020. Mm-hmm. What do we know? What do we know? We know the the, uh, the well. We know that there are very many studies now of solution focused around the world. There are studies in 12 languages, so. It looks as if solution focused works in different culture. You can go to different place. You have to change some questions. If you are working in China, you have to ask, what does your father think? Because father is very important. Yeah, so even if they don't say about father, you have to ask about father. Whereas in European countries, probably not so important. Individuals in the family are important but not specifically father. So solution focused seems to work in a number of different settings, a number of different cultures, and to be equally successful, the results suggest more or less equivalent outcomes for different countries, uh, which is important. And, The main difficulty for solution-focused research is because we don't like to use diagnosis terms. We don't like to say depression, anxiety. Uh, And so when they do politically significant studies, they use diagnosis as part of the construction of the study. And that means they often have no solution-focused information. government organization in Britain, they provide guidelines for treatment. They begin by doing a literature search on diagnostic term. So therefore, they never hear of solution focused, because there are almost no studies which include solution focused and depression and anxiety. We just describe what people want and their goals. So it becomes invisible because they don't look in the right place to find it, which is very annoying. And I have colleagues who have worked on the big committees and what they say is ignored because they say it's not in the literature. That's why EBTA asked that we begin to collect studies and to make the information public. They asked me to begin, but that was easy because there were only eight studies at that time so it's very easy i can say oh yes i can do this <laughs> you didn't imagine the, the curve how to, yeah. the future <laughs> your prefer the future was probably different at the time yeah. <laughs> yes so but of course it was lovely to work with other people from other countries but uh yeah so they began with eight in 1995 And now there are, two years ago, when I finished doing this job, there were 325 studies. So much bigger numbers. Probably you have looked at my website, the list is there for up to 2017. But it's too big now for one person, especially one person with no job, is too big to do the studies. There are 1,200 papers every year about solution-focused work. It takes a long time to examine the studies and to decide if they are good quality or not. EBTA say somebody else will take over, but 
nobody has yet begun to do that. And the Americans, they make a list from Google of the names of the studies, but they provide no information about the content of the study. They do not describe what the study looks at. It's not very easy. You have to begin from the beginning again to find out if a study is useful. Okay. I also saw that there are uh, how many? Uh, 11 uh, meta-analysis? Mm-hmm. Yes, I know. Uh, meta-analysis 10. There were 10 as of last two years ago. There may, I think there will be more now, although I haven't seen any, to be fair. Nobody has mentioned any, but probably there are others. There are, for example, there is um, Korea, South Korea, its own solution-focused organization. It has its own journal. It has its own committee. Probably they know many things that we do not know. They, they have their own operation to do it, their own system. Help me to understand two things, Alasdair. Um, you say something that is very interesting to me. Um, solution focus therapy comes from a, a post-structuralist view, you know? And what does it mean? It means many things. And one of these things is, as you say, that we don't use um, traditional diagnostical systems, um, yeah. which means that we don't use uh, one kind of diagnosis, actually, because often we talk about diagnosis if uh, it, it is one kind of, but that's not. The, The kind of diagnosis we use is mostly the um, nosographical um, diagnosis, DSM. And, uh, but sometimes I think, uh, and, and sorry, and, and this is um, a problem for many brief therapy, not only solution focused therapy, also strategic therapy, for example. Um, mm. But sometimes I think, um, um, It's a problem because we can't uh, use those kind of system, which is the um, system that the most part of the international community use for uh, proof that uh, an approach is effective. But it's, it's, it's hard to say, um, couldn't be just easy to do something like to say something like, I do the solution-focused therapy, but I use um, those kind of diagnostical instruments, uh, back depression inventory, um, symptom checklist, uh, 90, uh, something like that, uh, continuing to use my approach, solution-focused, but evaluating it with those kind of um, instruments it's it's it, it seems easy to me but maybe i'm i'm missing something the, we thought about that in ebta in about 1997-1999 we thought if we design a research protocol then we can pass it on to many people We have many friends, we know many people who do solution-focused. Uh, we can collect big numbers of cases very quickly with a standard template, a standard formula to do the research. Uh, so we spent a long time preparing a suitable one thing which we could all agree on as solution-focused. Uh, but we couldn't persuade anybody to use it. Everybody, well, I am too busy, he will do it. And nobody did it. I did five cases and uh, the group in London did four cases and uh, nobody else did any. So we don't have enough numbers to... So we, the, the design is still there, but uh, we don't, nobody has the interest to follow a standard pattern invented by somebody else, I think. It would be very good if that kind of study could be done, which would provide big enough numbers. And we had used standard instruments so that people would, so that the 
results would agree with each other. Our own ideas about actual standard tests like the um, global assessment of functioning, yeah, or, or the YOQ, things that are already recognized instruments. Uh, how has happened that, uh, um, as I read in, um, I think it was a chapter in the book of uh, the 2018 ABTA conference, in which you say that many uh, <coughs> states, many countries, are many governments are adopting a solution focused uh, perspective, are, which means that are considering or actually doing uh, the solution focus therapy in their healthcare system. Uh, how you convince them? Yes, that's, I think it, it has been very different in different countries. The what happened? Let me think. Let me think about this clearly. The for Britain, uh, there is a problem because somebody, somebody who likes CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, he had friends in government and they said all other therapies are no good, only this one is good. And they dismissed solution focused workers from their posts. They said, if you say solution focused words, we will sack you. You will not work for the government anymore. So that was a big disadvantage because we had some very good practitioners and now they are not allowed to practice. Uh, problem in America is that uh, if you are a doctor doing psychotherapy, you get very low rate of pay. The insurance company pays three times as much if you give medicine as if you give therapy. So it's very difficult to persuade American doctors to talk about solution focused. I think there are two at the moment who publish that they are doing solution focused. Um, but in other places, uh, in many European countries, they have more effective mechanisms. You can, you can do what you like to do and you're good at it and your insurance company will pay. So it's easier to bring solution focused into your practice. It seems to me, anyway, it seems to me that uh, solution focus is, uh, it seems to me, I, I probably read this, is one of the most, um, how to say, it's not like CBT, but it's, or psychodynamic therapy, but it's uh, one of the most uh, practiced uh, psychotherapy in, in the world. Uh, am I wrong? No, I think you're right. If you read in the big American textbooks like The Heart and Soul of Change or The Handbook of Psychotherapy and Behavior Change. Yeah, Duncan, Miller and Hubble. Yeah. Solution focused. They mention other therapies, but very quickly, and then they go back to solution focused. Yeah. Mm. And, oh, and the, yep. And do you, do, you, do you think is uh, the, the efficacy and the effectiveness is comparable to CBT? Yes, most, I think that most of the studies that have compared solution focused and CBT directly, uh, solution focused is as good as CBT. The, you know, Scott Miller and Barry Duncan? Yeah, of course right about common factors in therapy uh, but Barry Duncan did a big paper about CBT and said that in fact there are very many studies but most of the studies don't show any advantage yeah yes it has big literature yes it is very popular but it is not actually better it is much the same as other therapies the common factors 1995 Seligman in the Consumer Report study, mm -hmm. examined 1,300 clients and found that all the therapies were as good as each other. Mm -hmm. Although Alcoholics Anonymous 
had, was more successful because you never finish therapy. You continue and you have more therapy and if you have a relapse, you have more therapy again. So it's quite the same as ordinary psychotherapy. So then there's indirect support for solution focused and that nobody has demonstrated that other therapies are any better. But that's more difficult when you need to present a particular topic for a particular illness or particular disability. What, what do you say about people who say, you know, it's a very old story. A uh, brief therapy is okay for minor problems, uh, like anxiety, maybe some panic attacks, but if you have to work with um, big problems, personality disorders, uh, psychosis, uh, oh, I saw you are, you are looking papers, so <laughs> here, here, here's the data. <laughs> what research says, what do you say about this kind of uh, cradex? Well, then that was one reason why I thought being a psychotherapist and a psychiatrist would be a good thing because I could hopefully show to people that uh, the, the patient's benefit, the client's benefit. Uh, and we did show that. We did follow up studies. Uh, I was very lucky. I took a new job and had a, a new secure unit a locked unit for people with major mental disorder and they already had very good nursing staff so it was a very good unit to work in okay. and explain solution focused i just began to ask so what do you want to get out of being here which is interesting if somebody is brought in by policemen in handcuffs so what do you want to get from here <laughs> they are very surprised uh, but usually they want something quite sensible Well, they would just say, I want to get out of here. Mm -hmm. say, okay, good. You, know, you can get out of here when you don't do this and you don't do this and you eat your dinner and behave sensibly. So we were able to show in practice that you can use solution focused with people with psychosis, people with many personality problems, anything you like, people with drug use problems. Um, but this is still only one small unit in one hospital in one part of the country and it's difficult to persuade people to copy you because they like their own ideas that was difficult but and it had problems we were sufficiently successful with our client group our patients uh that we had we had to take, make contract with other areas also because we didn't have enough patients The nurses said, we have nothing to do. Everybody is better. You know, we have to get some patients from somewhere else. So we had contract with other areas that they could send their patients to us. I think a lot of that was due to solution-focused thinking. But it was also because we had good staff and good hospital. Mm. So there are several factors involved. Mm. But again, it is difficult to publicize that to get people to, to actually believe it. And people don't want to go to someone else's hospital to learn how to do things. So we can talk about it and we can point to our researches, but people don't necessarily believe it. When you say people, you, um, you are referring, you are referring for the most to practitioners. Yes. Because it seems that the The bigger, the bigger resistance is from them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's a client, of course, if they see something that works and that works better. And for better, I don't mean uh, efficacy, because, because as you say, uh, efficacy could be um, almost the same probably a, a little more or let's say the same of uh, other therapies but the efficiency how many sessions do you need to mm. accomplish yes. your steps to get the results is very different because um, I read 
that CBT lasts around um, 12 to 20, um, an average of 12 to 20 sessions, which is surprising to me because um, from my experience, it's uh, a lot more session needed for a CBT therapy, but it's, it's my impression. I don't do CBT. I just um, research says that it's around 12 to um, um, to, to 16, to, 12, to 20, 16, 20, which is good. But researchers say that um, solution focus is um, around three to six, the average three to six sessions. Yeah. Which uh, is good for clients. It's good for healthcare systems, especially in this historical moment. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't. Um, I'm talking about this very precise moment with uh, coronavirus, etc. I mean, this era, this decades in which whole uh, uh, healthcare system in the world are in crisis because it's one of the. Um, uh, biggest expense that uh, the governments have in, in a country. Yeah. What do you think could be a good way to help professionals and institution, institutions to um, accept solution focus, to at least know more about solution focus? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very difficult to to get the ideas into people's minds, so they will think about it, even if they don't do it. Then they will know what the conversation is about. Um, the traditional method is teaching. Yeah, you have learned teachers, and they go around speaking to everybody, and are convincing. Somehow people believe what they say and then copy it. Uh, and I'm sometimes at workshops by big experts and people are saying, oh, they are astonished. Yeah, the, the view changes completely. Not so much with my teaching, I don't think, but with some of these other people, yeah, the very famous ones, you see dramatic changes during the workshop. People will say, oh, Oh yes, we can do it that way. So you have the impression of a, can you see a conversion? Like a religious conversion? Suddenly, a new idea. And that helps, but it will take 20 years, 30 years for us to convince everybody. Yes. So teaching is the obvious way, publicity. Government publicity for CBT in Britain has not made it more popular. And also the success rate is very low. So that's also not made it very popular. They are lucky if they get 50% success in the British setting. So that doesn't encourage people to use CBT because they see it's just not good. But that means to get them to do something else, like solution-focused. We have to show them that it is having success, it is producing good results for people. Which just took me back to research. Just to, if I just say this is good, nobody will believe me. Why, why they believe me? But if we have researches carried out properly, which show that something is successful, to convince learned people, people like yourself, yeah, people like psychologists and doctors, if they see real research, perhaps they will believe it. Yeah. This is why I, I have to confess, the, this kind of interviews, uh, this kind, uh, are the, uh, less popular because, you know, therapists, uh, they want to know about uh, techniques, about what can I do with this kind of client. They don't want to know about research. But um, 
again, those are my favorite, my favorite interviews because yeah, you, are, you, you just learned new techniques, but do you know if that kind of technique can work with your clients? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And common factors say that um, we uh, hold hold the hold the um, hold the therapies are uh, equivalent in uh, efficacy, and uh, it's been saying since 1938, if I remember well, the, mm -hmm. the Dodo verdict. Uh, so probably yes. you want you want to switch to something that is more um uh, uh, uh to say uh more rapid more brief you know mm -hmm. yeah. um so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh, a couple of of questions again um there are some kind of uh filed uh, area in which you prefer to work and to do researches what are your favorite kind of researches in solution focusing which areas with which clients mm -hmm. the, the most interesting results that you discover in these years the i think the the, the most useful in is about um everyday clients clients we would all see often because uh, to work with serious mental illness is very interesting but not so many people do that so and so they will they will not want to know if it's easier or more difficult um numbers of sessions that, When I, when I was teaching family therapy, I was strategic therapist, uh, but we saw Steve DeShazer work and we thought, well, let us try this for six months and see if it is better than what we do already. And it, of course it was much better. And we found more respectful and not so many sessions. So there was a clear practical difference for the clinic. That we see more clients more quickly. Mm -hmm. but we were allowed to make those decisions whereas not every hospital allows you to do that not every clinic so it was good to you could demonstrate that you could have success more quickly and if people see that then they became more willing to take part in it but many of my psychiatrist colleagues said to me, oh, you are very good at talking with people. I said, well, it's not me. It's the technique. It's the solution focused. You could learn it. They, oh, no, 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 it's you that does. So it was very difficult to, to actually get them to try. And I don't know how you, how you changed that. I was there doing it and I still wouldn't believe enough to, to try it. It's like being a, a missionary. Yeah, you are spreading the knowledge of the gospel, but nobody is paying attention. So it is difficult. Yeah, I can see. I have a last question, and this is a question I always do in a hurry interview. So um, imagine that tomorrow, no, imagine that. <laughs> Uh, imagine that you um, <clears throat> want to, um, I was to say, to um, to give a suggestions to. It's not very solution focused. To um, to the therapist, to psychotherapist, um, to give a suggestion about an exercise that they can do outside in their common life in their everyday life and yeah, there's yeah. a suggestion to be a better therapist mm -hmm. yeah, what yeah. is your suggestion uh, i suggest that as an experiment 
for a week. Uh, every time you talk with anybody, you use some of their words in your responses. Doesn't matter which word, but always do that in every conversation. If you are buying a ticket from bus driver, or if you are talking to a professional colleague, or talking to your wife, use the use the same word, and you, often you will see a difference immediately. And they'll say, "Oh, he pays attention." Yeah, I have done this in in prisons and in places, and they say, "Oh, you are listening." You know, <laughs> I don't know so much about what they do. So yeah, it produces a response, something. I think in the brain about speech makes a connection. So that would be my idea. I like it. Um, to use their words and, and see what happens. Mm -hmm. I like it. And this is, I have to say that this is um, <clears throat> one of my favorite um, mm -hmm. experiments, my, one of my favorite uh, suggestions, because it's easy, it's affordable by everyone uh, mm -hmm. who are uh, who, who will see this interview can immediately use this and it's a very good practice to be a, a budget therapist um, yeah okay perfect perfect That's that. yep. i hope you can find that useful and get people to do it because it is, I think it makes a big change in people's working skill. Yeah, I bet that. I, I really believe that. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Alasdair. It was very interesting. I hope it will be useful to uh, spread solution focus more and more around uh, the, the world and to um, give some ideas about um, how to work with solution focused therapy. Um, you also have uh, uh, written some books, which I, is, uh, I, I honestly suggest to, to people. Um, and so thank you again. Um, see you next time. Yes, thank you. Good luck with your endeavors. Yeah. Send my best wishes to Italy. Yeah. Okay. Signing off then. Goodbye for now. Bye.